Hey there boys and girls, Banjo here and you probably decided to watch this video because you're sitting in your car at your job's parking lot trying to find something to delay the inevitability of you having to spend just one more day dressed as a cartoon mouse to entertain screaming asshole children while you try not to drown yourself in the toilets during your bathroom breaks. So before your tears make it too hard for you to watch this, let's talk about a new game called A Hat in Time. A Hat in Time is a cute as heck 3D platformer indie game developed by Gears for Breakfast, which sounds incredibly safe and delicious, and was released on October 5th of this year, 2017. It was put on Kickstarter back in 2013 where it raised a total of over $290,000 over the course of its campaign, nearly 10 times the requested amount of 30000 So is this game worth buying instead of another hit of crack to get you through another day of your miserable life? Let's find out! In A Hat in Time, you play as Hat Kid for lack of a better name, a far more adorable than you'll ever be little girl who wears a hat, who's on her way home in her spaceship until there's a knock on the glass. Upon investigation, she discovers it's a member of the Mafia demanding ship tax on her spaceship for being too close to their planet. After ignoring him, he breaks through the glass sending her, as well as her spaceship's fuel source, a large amount of magical hourglasses, plummeting to the planet's surface. So now she must collect the hourglasses in order to continue her journey home. I like how the plot is simple enough for any silly goose nugget, like myself, to understand. And so begins our first mission, where not only are we introduced to our first chapter, but also to another character. A little mustached girl who's totally not the main antagonist of the story that we pursue relentlessly for no other reason than she's running away from us. Much like how I got a date for my prom, but instead of running she was sleeping and instead of pursuing her, I used an ether soaked rag. After we chase her for a bit, she helps us locate one of our hourglasses where we get our main weapon, an umbrella, and mercilessly slaughter some stranger with it to get our murderous little hands on the shiny thing, and then it's back to the ship. From here on out, the ship acts as our hub world and allows us to access new levels as well as old ones in case we want to replay them and try not to suck as bad as we did the first time. One of my favorite things about this game is most of the levels are open exploration and you're free to run about instead of doing the mission right away, and this allows you to mess around and learn the controls while hunting collectibles. And the controls are really tight too, <coughs> making exploring incredibly fun. Not only can you double jump, but you can also dash, allowing you to get to harder to reach places, and this dash has one of the best abilities in the game. The ability to jump out of it at any time, which allows you to land precisely on platforms. And speaking of collectibles, you can collect balls of yarn throughout the levels, which are important because they allow you to make new hats, which give you different abilities, like the ability to sprint, throw explosive potions, or help you forget that your life is in shambles. Not only do the hats give you different abilities, but you can purchase badges from this very trustworthy individual that also have different abilities, allowing even more customization to your playstyle. The game has so much going for it, unlike your hopes for future success. Things like time rifts that offer platforming challenges, a text-based adventure where you play as a corgi, collecting rift coins that let you unlock things like new colors for your outfit or soundtrack remixes, these are just some of the many things that add to its charm and addictive qualities. The graphics of this game are absolutely beautiful and remind me of the games I used to play back when I was a kid and didn't realize life was meaningless yet, and the soundtrack, mostly composed by Pascal Michael Stifle, is very bouncy and fun and according to its Kickstarter stretch goals, also includes tracks made by Grant Kirkhope, the musical mastermind behind music from Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, and so much more. And let's not forget, the game also has full voice acting. Not only does the initial game have so much more to offer than your existence, but also due to its Kickstarter stretch goals, there's planned DLC for new chapters, new game plus, and even a co-op mode. Plus, the game has Steam Workshop support so players can waste their lives modding and sharing their own creations with one another. So is it any fun? Heck yeah, it's fun. I can't tell you how much I adore this game. And with a price point of $29.99 or half the price of a more than likely shitty AAA game, I'd say it's a toss up between buying this game or buying enough alcohol to enter an irreversible coma. <laughs> 